Welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be doing a review on a gun that I have wanted to get my hands on to for quite some time. Uh, this gun is a gun that when it first came out uh, seemed to have quite a bit uh, of reliability issues. Um, as you can probably see in the title, you know that I'm talking about the Shadow Systems CR920. So the story with the CR920 is that Shadow Systems basically you know, release this, um, and they had taken some things from their other models, the MR920, DR920, all those, uh, they had taken some, um, basically some things that they wanted to change for those and add those into the CR920, one of those being a cosmetic feature that would basically eliminate wear on the uh, top of the barrel <clears throat> uh, that's visible to the eye. So their big thing is they have the uh, copper barrels look really nice. Um, and from what I read, uh, they didn't like the wear that was showing up there. So they added a new design on top of the barrel that basically put a little uh, V into the top of the barrel. Uh, that was, became to be known as the butt barrel. So they released the CR920 and they're having all sorts of reliability issues. Um, basically that was a result of the butt barrel. Now I don't know what the science is behind that. Uh, all I know is that Shadow Systems basically acknowledged it. They said this is an issue. We don't know why it's an issue, but we're going to make it right. And basically if you owned a CR920, they would just send you out a new barrel um, free of charge. Um, throw your old barrel away, whatever you want to do with it. Um, but they sent you a new barrel and that fixed the problems. <clears throat> now, I have first-hand experience with that. I had a family member who uh, had the CR920 with the butt barrel, uh, got it swapped out with a regular one, and fixed all the reliability issues. So, now, uh, fast forward, and we're gonna be doing a review on the CR920P. Now, this is their compensated uh, version of the CR920 and I'm going to be running a Swamp Fox Sentinel 2 on there today So now that we've got the story of the CR920, uh, we'll jump into basically what this is now This is a micro carry pistol and it's coming in right at about 20 ounces And you're still going to get a barrel length of about 3.75 inches so that's still pretty good. It's a quarter inch shorter than your uh, Glock 19, uh, things like that. So this is gonna be pretty comparable to like a Glock 43 uh, without the comp on it. So without that, it's about the size of, of that. So for comparison's sake, this is the FN Reflex that we've just did a review on, and here's the CR920P. So as you can see, let's see if we can get that. Um, FN Reflex is gonna be still quite a bit shorter um, there you can see the CR920P, basically the only added length to it is the compensator. So the CR920, um, it says it has about a four and a half to five pound trigger pull. Uh, on my trigger scale, it comes in at four and a half pounds every single time. Uh, now this gun I have fired and basically I'll get into that. So the thing with Shadow Systems is they have a break in period, they have tighter tolerances, so they need time for the gun to break in. Um, sometimes they don't need any break-in. I've had two shadow systems. Um, my MR920 needed a lot of break-in time. My DR920 needed no break-in time. I wanted to basically get this broken before I started doing a review on it. So this gun is broken in. It took about 250 rounds. Um, but the last 50 rounds, I know that's not much. It's ran without issue. But with the shadow systems, you kind of get to a point where you kind of know, okay, now I can start doing training with this. Uh, I don't have to worry about there being failures and things like that. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to do some shooting with this today. Um, I will say this thing shoots incredibly flat for how small it is. That right there, can't get my pinky on it. But with the ergonomics, the way that it's almost got almost like a built-in, um, feels like a magwell uh, right there on the bottom, gives you a really, really good grip. Uh, it's got the double undercut so you can get a good uh, grip on the gun. Now, from the factory, uh, did not come with a red dot, but it does come with your night sights. And I believe these are from Night Fission. Uh, so, Night Fission sights on the front and back, uh, and then through the Swap Box Sentinel 2 on there. Um, so, we're going to be basically doing a review of that as well. Now, I'm going to be shooting the Sentinel 2 on this and on the FN Reflex over the upcoming weeks. 
so I can get a good full review on that and see how it holds up as well. So stay tuned for the Sentinel-2 review, but so far, I absolutely love this thing. So some of the biggest questions I think people are gonna have regarding the CR920P is, is the P uh, worth it over a uh, traditional CR920? Based on my shooting so far, I say absolutely. Um, it adds a little bit of a barrel length and um, the re basically the recoil reduction that you're going to get for such a small gun like this is pretty significant. So these guns are going to be pretty snappy. You expect them to be snappy, um, but all of the gun manufacturers out there are actually getting pretty good at trying to basically reduce the snappiness of these guns. So, so far this has been a blast to shoot. It shoots like a full size, especially with that 13 round mag. Um, it's been great. So we'll do some more shooting today now that this is broken. You guys will be able to see on the footage um, that this probably, I think, will shoot flatter than you would expect. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're scooting back a little bit and got it loaded up. Let's keep going. rounds all right uh, just shooting for center zone here so obviously we're doing just fine uh, like I said uh, with this gun being a micro carry gun one, with it being compensated, and two, with the ergonomics of the gun. I talk a lot about the ergonomics, on especially like the reflex and things like that. Um, they're just good. They make these small guns feel like mid-sized guns, and they're just easy to shoot. So I um, would definitely recommend it. <clears throat> uh, that's one thing that Shadow System does very well. Uh, their guns are pretty light, which is nice too. Um, but it's it's definitely a benefit over like your Glock 43, which is basically what this is. It's a clone um, of like a Glock 43. Um, it's just it's just good. So as we're sitting here uh, loading up rounds, um, my initial thoughts are: a, it shoots well. Um, B, it shoots accurate. Um, we've only we've only shot out to 10 yards so far. Um, so really anything should be accurate. Um, <clears throat> it feels well in the hand. Um, I know that I talk a lot about ergonomics, um, but just the better grip you can get on a gun, the better you're gonna shoot it. So if you have a gun that you're just not getting a good grip on, um, it's moving around a lot in your hand, you're not, one, you're not gonna be able to shoot it quickly. Two, you're not gonna be able to get a firm grip and you're not gonna shoot it accurately. So <sighs> Shadow Systems did really, really good on this one along with all their other shadow systems. That's why I like them. Uh, I shoot the DR920 in competitions and I have the MR920 that uh, I'll typically carry for everyday use or just whatever. It's just a really good shooting gun. Uh, so that's one thing that I really, really enjoy about shadow systems is their framework, um, the stippling, undercuts, everything about them, uh, they shoot well. Uh, with that being said, um, we're shooting great out to 10 yards so far. Let's just keep moving back and see what kind of groups we get. All right, so as I sit here and load up ammo again, uh, I've got to come clean on something. I did not film the shooting at 15 yards. Now, I wish I had, um, so let me just fill you in. Uh, we shot our first 10 rounds at 15 yards. Um, we shot them all through the same hole um, in that center mass as we did uh, the previous times. So instead of shooting all, uh, or instead of shooting both magazines at 15 yards, we scooted back to 20 and basically did a relatively quick mag dump um, with some double taps um, and shot relatively quickly. And uh, with all that, we still had all but three uh, in, the, in the A zone. So we had three in the C zone, um, which from 20 yards, uh, I'll take that all day long. C zone is still, um, that's a good hit as far as self-defense is concerned. And uh, especially with a small gun like that. Um, that one's gone forever. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move back to 30 yards and um, see, where, see where we hit there. Now I'll shoot a little slower because once we get back to this range, I like to see uh, where it's gonna hit when I'm you know, being nice and controlled with the gun. Uh, and then after that, if we get them, really I'd like to keep them all uh, in the A zone when we're doing it nice and controlled. <clears throat> so like I said, we have three, three in the C zone right now. Uh, so we'll set up at 30 yards, which is probably about the max that I would ever consider for um, a micro carry pistol or even just nine millimeter for that, um, uh, for that alone, uh, unless you have a, unless you do a lot of training and truly are comfortable taking shots farther, wouldn't recommend it. But um, 30 yards and in, um, that's, that's a comfortable area for me. That's, that's the no doubter zone. Um, I'm comfortable from there and in. Anything farther than that, um, any shot that you would ever take in a self-defense scenario is all gonna be situational dependent. How many people are around? What's, be, what's behind your target? Um, is your life truly in danger? Um, Cause you're responsible for every round that comes out of your gun. So 30 yards and in though, I'd like to keep these all within the A box. And uh, if we can do that, I'll be happy with this. All right, we are back here at 30 yards. Um, we're running the small mag. Um, so it still feels really good. Uh, 30 yards, we're gonna be nice and controlled here and uh, see where we get our hits. Um, like I said, I've already, I believe I zeroed this at like 15 yards. Um, so if we do see it start to drift off left or right, um, the farther back you go, you can get a pretty good determination on if your elevation, or I'm sorry, if your windage is off. So if we do start to see a trend to one side, we can always bring it back over. So let's see where we get. There's 10 down. Let's do 13 more. I feel like 23 rounds will be a pretty good sample size for 30 yards. Oh, what do we got here? Actually, well, nope, it did come back a little bit. So that was a failure. It was not locked all the way back. So my thumb was not on the slide release. Um, the round had just not kicked forward into the, into the chamber. So that was a failure. Um, I did have to pull it back a little bit, but then it kicked right back in. So all right. There's 23 rounds. Let's go take a look. All right, so as we come up here, I see basically, I know we already had three in here. Uh, we did have one that escaped left, still in the C zone. Um, but this tells me that we have a trend to the right, uh, which means I'm gonna bring this back over to the left of Fuzz and reshoot a group on a fresh piece of cardboard. So I'm happy that they're not all over. Um, and I'm pretty confident that if we bring this group over that the majority of them would be in the A zone. Um, so before we credit this to bad shooting, which it probably is, um, let's blame it on the red dot first and bring it over to the left and shoot one more group. All right. So we're going to take a pause. If you don't know how to, um, adjust a red dot or anything like that, uh, this will be more for you. I want to go over uh, how to make adjustments. So here's what we're going to do. Now we have our group here and basically I'm going to measure um, the center of this area uh, over to here. So I've got my tape measure here and we're going to call that, I don't know, let's say we want to bring it over five inches. <clears throat> So I know that my Swat Fox Sentinel-2, um, it's one MOA per click. So one MOA at 25 yards is a quarter inch. So if I want to bring it over 
five inches, I actually need to do 20 clicks. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got our gun right here. We have our um, elevation knob on the top and we've got our windage on the side. So I know if I go counterclockwise, that'll bring the group to the right, but we wanna go to the left. So I'll put this in here and let's see. We need to do Stand by, that tool doesn't fit. We're gonna find another one. All right, so I found my uh, other tool that I have. Um, usually if one tool doesn't work, this one usually takes care of it. Um, so we'll do our clicks now. All right, one thing I absolutely love about this optic is that you can, I have hearing protection on and I don't have the batteries in, so I don't hear like the enhanced, um, sound but i can hear and feel every one of those clicks so that is very nice when you get an optic that you can't really feel the clicks you're like is this thing even turning um no that was definitely turning and that was 20 clicks on the dot so um that right there was so 20 clicks every click is one moa one moa at 100 yards is about one inch so at 25 yards it's about a quarter inch and we needed to come over five inches, five times four is 20. You do the math um, or don't, I don't care. So anyways, that's how you do um, adjustments, at least on windage. So 30 yards, that's a pretty good place to adjust your windage. Um, it's probably, like I said, not gonna be shooting much farther than that, but if you can get your windage on at 30 yards, uh, you're gonna be pretty set. So. so we're here at 30 yards, we made our adjustment. Um, I've got a, a cardboard target down there. Um, it does have some shots on it, but they're all uh, stickered up, so there's no holes in it currently. So every hole we put in there is one that's coming from right here. So we've got, uh, like I said, seven in this mag, and then we'll do a full mag. Uh, so we'll see if uh, our group's going to hit more center now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, I get in the habit of just wanting to shoot these faster than I should, especially when I'm trying to shoot a controlled group at 30 yards. I just get impatient. Uh, from what I can tell though, the shots are definitely more uh, in the center, <clears throat> which is good. So we'll try to do these a little more controlled. Get a good group here and uh, patience. Alrighty, I did my best on being patient. For the most part, I was very patient. Uh, let's go see how it looks. All right, here we are. So 30 yards, um, again, like I said, so we had the ones that were uh, covered up. So we looks like we have uh, five in the C zone, but I'll take those. Um, everything is in the center. Uh, for the most part, I mean, that's a, I would call that a pretty good group for 30 yards. Um, I'm not even a great shooter, and this gun just, it feels like you could just pick it up and shoot it well. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Obviously, um, I was probably aiming right about here, um, so I, I could see that really if I wanted to get a true all A zone hit. Obviously, I have to aim a little higher. But uh, CR920P, that's a good shooting gun. Um, accurate i mean 30 yard group i'll take that all day long all right so that's our shooting with the cr 920p um i hope you guys can agree with me that this is a flat shooting gun i mean this thing i mean it's it's skinny uh, i forget what the specs are um but this is a i mean this is a slim gun with you know the ability to hold 13 plus one now the one downside is this does not take glock magazines so shadow systems has their um their own mags for this for the 10 round and the 13 round now i do i did believe i believe i did hear that um palmetto actually makes 15 round mags that may 
work for the shadow systems. I know they'll work for uh, the like the Glock 48 um, and the 43X and stuff like that. Um, I have not tried that, so I I can't confirm that for sure. Um, overall, though, this is a great shooting gun. Um, I felt like the more that it, it breaks in, it shoots even flatter. Um, so today we had one minor hiccup um, with the round feeding. So I don't know if that was mag, gun, whatever. Um, we're still right around the 300 uh, round period. So the gun should be broken in. We shouldn't be having any malfunctions, but we had that one today. So it'll just be something to keep an eye on. Um, the good thing is we're not having anything uh, major. All these can be, um, they're gonna work themselves out over time. So overall, I'm a huge fan of Shadow Systems. Um, I this They did not send this to me. This is a gun that I bought. Um, so this this is my honest review. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, the Sentinel 2, it's awesome. It's been holding zero. Um, again, we went and we made an adjustment uh, with our tape measure at 30 yards. Uh, we did the exact amount of clicks. And then you, as you guys saw in the very next one, um, it brought that grew basically dead center at 30 yards <clears throat> so this thing has been awesome the one thing that i did notice was the i wish it was maybe a little bit brighter now looking at it it's bright enough i i wish it was a little like one more brightness setting um and i'd be happy the only other thing i wish it had is the multiple reticle system so that's something that hollison has um, and it's something that swap fox currently has on their uh, larger optics the justice and the liberty and that's what i run on my competition gun so that is something that i'd like to see in the future is the circle dot option because um, i'm a big fan of just running the circle so this was a little bit of an adjustment for me going back to a single dot a lot of people prefer a single dot that's just not something that i've practiced a lot with because i i just like shooting with a circle i believe that just me personally i'm a faster shooter with it so final thoughts this thing shoots great it's got an amazing trigger uh, very smooth there's not really much you can ask for if you're wanting a gun in this size it be, it's got all the features that you need it's going to conceal well with this tiny little grip but with the ergonomics it still feels like you can get a good full grip on this gun and obviously make good shots up to 30 yards which like i said there's not really much more you can ask for um out of a gun this size so um only other thing is i i would be interested in doing a review of all the micro carries that i have just kind of see maybe um how they all stack up against each other and maybe what's the best overall um i mean this one this could be it so keep an eye on that video and i hope you guys enjoy this one if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comments i'd be more than happy to answer those to the best of my abilities so thank you guys again if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you guys next time